I've also heard, you're lucky to be alive, so keep quiet. Lest We Forget, a project by Luigi Toscano. We were brought to Birkenau, to die in Birkenau. Luigi Toscano travels around the world photographing contemporary witnesses of the Holocaust. Now he's on his way to Paris for his largest exhibition to date. The project is a race against time. Soon, there won't be any survivors left. This is all the picture that I take around the world. Soon, his portrait of 95-year-old Jeanette Kolinka will be joining them. She survived the Auschwitz-Birkenau concentration camp. Take the seat here. Okay. Jeanette Kolinka was lucky. Upon arrival at the camp, her father, brother, and nephew were all sent straight to the gas chamber. Jeanette was 19 at the time. Take off the glasses. The bright light reminds some of the survivors of the interrogations by the Gestapo. Jeanette Kolinka is nervous, but a staff member of a Jewish organization reassures her. The woman knows the survivors. She translates and helps the photographer establish a sense of trust. Okay. Can you open the eyes, please, a little bit more for me? No. My eyes are burning. Okay. C'est ça. Fetish. Si je suis comme moi, il peut être que bien. She's sure that the picture will be pretty. After the photo session, Jeanette Kolinka's story is written down. Like many Jews in France, she kept it to herself for years, not even telling her husband for a long time. I'm a little embarrassed about being famous for my story. So many people died in Europe during that time. And me, because of that period, I'm considered a celebrity? When I think about it, I feel ashamed. Each of these encounters is difficult for Luigi Toscano. He has to maintain an emotional distance as a means of self-protection. I'm pretty sure that if it were allowed, we would embrace one another. And of course, there's a sense of powerlessness, knowing that people have been through such horrible suffering. It really gets to you. UNESCO headquarters in Paris. Luigi Toscano's exhibition will soon be on display in and around the building. This is just like the fence at the United Nations in New York. I wish I could set up straight away, but unfortunately that's not possible. The pictures aren't here yet. I'm feeling antsy. You have security here. We must speak about what's going on when something happens, you know, what we will doing together. When they start to make swatiska, and also, you know, we, we must... Of course! When there is... Um what we call sensible uh, exhibitions, it's, it is one, unfortunately. Uh, we check every day. We let, we let our security know. There's always the fear in the back of my mind that something might happen to me, that I might be made the target of an attack. We expected it to happen eventually. In 2019, it did. While on display in Vienna, several portraits were vandalized. The incident made headlines around the world. I just couldn't bear it. All those pictures destroyed. 
the swastikas over their faces. That was really tough. It tore me up. Survivors called me, and of course they were appalled by what had happened. But they said, Luigi, don't give up. We didn't either. We're about to meet another wonderful person. I don't know much about her. I'm ready, Rachel. If you like, you can, you can sit here. My parents were picked up and sent to Auschwitz. I lost 17 family members in Paris alone. In Poland, all of them were killed. I fled from a detention center with my sister because my mother wanted us to escape. I didn't want to leave her. I was scared. So she slapped me. My mother slapped me. It was the first slap of my life. And I later realized this slap saved me. I left through the fire exit. The policemen on duty let my sister and me leave. They simply looked the other way. When you're eight years old and they take your mother, your father, practically your whole family away, you grow up quickly. You're no longer a child. Mannheim, Germany, a week before the opening. This is one of the few places where I can really relax and unwind. Taking the photographs is not all that spectacular in itself. It's encountering the people. I'm more interested in their stories. I can't get them out of my head. It affected me so deeply, there were times where I couldn't sleep for days on end, and I suffered a sudden hearing loss. It's something that I really needed time to get used to, or I had to get used to, because otherwise it's impossible to come to terms with all that insanity. The Holocaust is something I've always grappled with. And that's why I developed this concept of displaying portraits in public spaces. To intentionally provoke, to say, hey, there are still people around, people who survived that madness. And yet, in some places and communities around the world, we act as though the whole thing never happened. So was nie stattgefunden hat. Final preparations are made in a warehouse on the outskirts of Paris. The latest photos have just come back from the printers. On one hand, you look at the details to make sure everything's all right. On the other, when you are standing here face to face, so to speak, you have flashbacks of the true encounter. Four days later, installation begins. Portraits from Luigi Toscano's Lest We Forget series have already been exhibited in New York, Berlin and Washington, D.C. It's pretty impressive, I have to say. This is the biggest exhibition I've had up to now. It's a whole new dimension in itself. We're presenting over 200 photos here, and people are starting to come and look at them and read the stories. And that's just what I'd hoped to achieve. The exhibition inside the UNESCO building includes a portrait of 86-year-old Rachel Zudinak. To date, 
Toscano has photographed some 400 people for his series. He doesn't have a favorite. What matters to him are the people they represent. He knows all of them by name. Susan was actually the first woman I was able to photograph, and she made a lasting impression on me. She said something very profound. Those who forget the past are doomed to repeat it. And she entrusted me with this saying and said, take it and internalize it and keep this saying in mind for when you need it most. When people start to relativize or even deny the Holocaust. It's the day of the opening. All the portraits are in place and the photographer is feeling a bit nervous. Four survivors are coming. Of course I'm nervous because we're talking about survivors who allowed me to take their portraits. And now they'll be seeing the pictures for the first time. I hope everything goes well. He's worried about the reaction of one man in particular, Elie Buzon, father of Agnès Buzon, former health minister of France. <laughs> it's really exciting. I guess this is the reality, but I can't stand to see such a sad old man, that's all. Exactly. <laughs> She seems to like it a lot. That's a nice feeling. It's not just my portrait. It represents so much more. All those deaths, the entire Shoah. It's important for this exhibition to exist and to travel around the world.